Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. Today we're going to try and put everything together that we've got so far, in order to test Primal Engine. In order to better test the engine and have a little fun as we go, I've prepared a 3D scene that we can try and import using the level editor. Here's what the scene looks like in Maya. It's supposed to be some kind of hangar or laboratory building where all kinds of tests are being done, and from the looks of it, not all of it might be legal or ethical. While I did make this scene, a large number of 3D models come from different sources and were not modeled by me personally. Roughly half of the models within the scene come from this site called Kitbash 3D, where you can download one of their kits for free. These are fully textured models that you can download in various formats. It's called Mission to Minerva, and as you can see, it's intended for sci-fi cinematics. There's been a competition for artists to create short movies using these assets, some of which are also showcased here. The other parts of the scene contain models made by Mike Winkleman, or Beeple. It's an animated scene that's called Zero Day, and is also used by NVIDIA in their ray tracing demos. The complete Cinema 4D project is available for download for free from his website among his other beautiful creations. You can find the rendered animation on YouTube which looks really great with the music. In which we use a cyber weapon to create physical destruction. A battle is waging across the internet. In my limited time and 3D modeling skills, I also created this spaceship model, which is actually something I did about 15 years ago, and recently I did the building and the fan, which I'm especially proud of. And of course I created the Jane model a while back. Oh I almost forgot to mention that the statue models are from Sketchfab. This entire scene is available for download if you're a Patreon supporter. I'll put the links to all these websites in the video description. Don't worry if you don't have access to these models, you can use anything that you can get your hands on, whether it's from the internet or by making a model in your favorite 3D application. Something as simple as 3 cubes would do fine. While the editor is importing our scene, I'll change the location to which the model files are saved. Because I don't want to include large binary files in the repository, I'm going to change the location to be in the output root folder of the executables. This folder is ignored by Git, and we don't have to worry about accidentally checking in the files with our code. As you can see, we have three models which we can export by opening them. First is the fan model which we rename accordingly. Next is the spaceship which I originally called an interceptor. That's why I name it int underscore th model. Finally we have the laboratory building and this one goes into a file called lab underscore model. Ok now we're ready to load our models in test renderer. In render item.cpp, we can generalize load model function to load any model using a file path. Instead of assigning the model ID directly, it will return it to the caller. 
For this scene we need three variables for our model IDs. Don't worry about hard coding this, because this is just test code. We'll do it properly in the engine and editor. So now we have fan model ID, int model ID, and lab model ID. Since each geometry is held in a render item, we need three render item IDs for each model. Finally we create a game entity for each model. I'll add a little check here to make sure that we compile our shaders before we create the materials. Then I'll add a new function for removing render items, game entities, and unloading meshes. In create render item function we can load our models by calling load model and passing the relative path to each model file. The models are loaded on different threads. In the meanwhile, we can create the game entities that own the render items. I'll position the fan model so that it will be rendered correctly, relative to the building. And I'll do the same for the spaceship model. Next we wait for all threads to finish, after which we can create a material. For now all models use a single material. We can put everything together and create three render items and add them to the unordered map, so that we can look them up later when we want to remove them. This function doesn't have anything to return now. When destroying render items, we simply call remove item three times with the corresponding IDs. Finally we need a function that writes the render item IDs to a buffer, so that they can be passed to the renderer. We must forward declare this function in testRenderer.cpp, in order to be able to call it. In the render loop, we call this function, giving it a local array, where it will write the item IDs. We set a pointer to this array, along with the number of IDs in the frame info data structure. When initializing the application, we call create render items. I'm going to rename these functions, since they now create and destroy multiple render items.
we need to change the data type in the unordered map to hold entity IDs instead of ID types. I have to update function calls with the new names. And I'd like to place the camera somewhere within the scene that's not completely random. I forgot to change the return type of the forward declaration, so I'll fix that now. Ok we have an assertion fail here, and this time it's the assertion that's faulty and not our code. I guess my idea was to check that each single mesh geometry had only one sub mesh, but I'm using the wrong variable here. So let's just remove this assertion. Brilliant. Doesn't this look awesome? Yes it does, because, we, did it. It does look a bit like an still image, although it's being rendered at 60 frames per second, so let's try and put more life in this scene. The simplest thing that we can do for now, is to add a little bit of motion, using game scripts. Because we're going to write multiple script classes, I'll create a new CPP file where we can put those in. This is basically our game code, so in case you hadn't realized it yet, we're actually making a game with our engine. Cool. We already have one script which I'll move into this file. This is the rotator script. We can modify this to rotate the fan model about its x-axis. For this I changed the rotation speed and direction, and the axis about which the fan should rotate. Where the game entity for the fan is created, we can tell the function to attach this script to the fan entity. Note that we didn't even need to tell the engine where our script class is located or include any header files whatsoever. So now we have a rotating fan. Next I'd like the spaceship to slowly hover up and down. I'd also like it to roll and pitch a little bit to make it look like it's really hovering over some kind of anti-gravity field. We could use a sine wave for this, but this is too regular and predictable. I'd like to make something that looks more random while having a smooth motion. We can try multiplying and adding more signs to make it wiggle more. This is pretty much what I had in mind, so let's put that in a new game script. Again we can copy what we already have and rename it. Let's name it Wibbly Wobbly Script. Here we only need to change the update function. I'll put our formula here. We're going to use the same formula for pitch and roll as well as the height of the spaceship. In order to make these movements out of phase, I'm going to calculate this twice with slightly different values for alpha. We set the rotation about X and Z axis, and calculate a new Y position and set it as well. If you ever want to succeed in the games industry, or any other industry for that matter, please for all that you hold dear and holy, don't write code like this. This is just for testing and I'm sure we'll never see the light of day in production code.
Anyway, let's attach the wibbly wobbly script to the spaceship and see what happens. Looks like it's hanging way too low. Let me lift it a bit higher. Oh I made a typo here. It should be an addition instead of a multiplication. It looks better now. I'll fine tune this a little more because of my OCD. And there you have it. It took us a while to get here, but I'm very happy with what we've accomplished. In the next episode, we're going to have more fun by implementing a basic input system which will allow us to move the camera around the scene using mouse and keyboard. Before we end the video, I'll add a note and some assertions here to let people know how to get this to work if they don't have the model files ready. Other than that we're done for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. As always thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub, so you don't have to type everything over from the videos. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then, take care and happy game engineering.